Good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, we have, um, let me get back to my screen. Uh, that would be Steve Packard. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I have a project for the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority. It's right on the border of Amherst and Hadley. It's on the UMass campus. The project is to do new electric bus chargers for their incoming fleet uh, late for later this summer. We're looking to have them installed uh, around June, July, that time frame. Uh, so I'm here tonight to speak with you about the project. And I think that this is a, I could get a, a site plan or review waiver um, from you. I just, I'd like to go through the project to, to make sure that, you know, that could be the case. And if not, then we'll go through the site plan review process. Um, this is kind of an unusual request in as much as that many years ago when the, uh, when the, the bus station was being built at, uh, we thought they were gonna come to us for a site plan and they claim, no, uh, the University of Massachusetts is gonna build it, then they're gonna turn it over. So they used the Dover Amendment to get around the site plan. So somebody probably didn't give you some of the history of the loopholes that well, they- Well, it's, it's more than the Dover <laughs> Amendment when it's the state that's doing it. Okay. Where is this gonna go, Steve, again? Where are the chargers going to go? Yes. They're gonna be at the facility at the Southwest corner. I can show you where they're going to be. Let me uh, enable sharing. Sure. So who pays for the electricity? It's coming from the UMass power system. Okay. I have it set for all participants to share. So if I zoom out a little bit, have these on the left, Amherst on the right. And then this corner of the UMass campus, this is the building here. So the curb cut for the building or for the site okay. is in Amherst, but the facility is in, it's in Adley. It's along Governor's Drive here. Okay. So this is a grading plan. I also have a, the electrical site plan. So this corner of the building, that's the Southwest corner. That's where we're looking to install some electrical equipment along the building. There's a 650 kilowatt generator plan, as well as some transformers. And um, so there's a Vista switch that UMass is requiring. Be connecting to the power source that's in the street along Holdsworth Way. Again, it's on the uh, UMass's power. And we're not altering the building in any way. The only alteration is we'll do, do a metal covering or some conduits that are going along the face of the building. Uh, that's really the only alteration that we're planning. <coughs> but it's a 650 kilowatt generator. It's gonna bring 1200 amps to the facility. Um, it's only intended for emergency use. Uh, the reason why they're upsizing it is to support the electric bus fleet that's incoming this year, and they'll have, I assume, several more in the near future or in the in the future as they phase out their diesel fleet. How many charging stations? Uh, so the, there's two chargers, and there's going to be two chargers in the building right now. Okay. That that could grow to six within the building. But this, right now, they're planning for two outside, two chargers. How many bikes do you play? This is for, for, for charging bicycles? Uh, buses. 40-foot, new flyer, electric buses. And where else in the valley do you have chargers? Of this size? There aren't any. There's some smaller 75-kilowatt chargers that are for... Um, 
personal vehicles that are around around campus. And and how do you anticipate getting to the buses through Hadley? I mean, the charges through Hadley. You're going to be coming, you know, up Rocky Hill Road, and uh, or are you going to be coming to the center of Amherst and driving down, or what? That could be a concern. When we have a contractor on board, uh, I'll know more, but I can certainly direct them to avoid certain Yeah, we, we certainly don't want them. these buses, at least I don't, going down the back roads of Hadley just because it's shorter, a shorter route. Yeah, but that's, that's not the issue. <clears throat> uh, the question is whether we even have site plan approval jurisdiction over a basically a building on the UMass campus. And I did ask um, Steve if he knew whether he would even be using the local building inspector or the state building inspector for the, uh, the project. I don't know if you have any more information on that, Steve. Yeah, so the PBTA, unlike other transit agencies around the state, they own their buildings. Uh, so it will be a local building inspector. Okay. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, Bill, but it is an issue if they cause deterioration of Hadley roads. I mean, well, the buses, the buses are on a route, whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're not discussing okay. the bus routing with PVTA. We're discussing the bus building with the um, designer of the charging. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually, as I understand that this is a generator to provide backup charging for the bus chargers that are already installed or will be installed inside the building. Okay. So, um, so the charging equipment will be along the side of the building. The actual dispenser where they connect to the bus will be inside the building. And the, the generator will be outside. It's a diesel generator. And that's an emergency so, generator for when the whole UMass grid goes down. That's right. So the PVPA is not part of the university system at all, is it? No. So you're basically giving them electricity. UMass is giving the PBTA electricity, correct. So your request is to waive site plan approval for basically backup generators, right? That's it. Okay. I'll make a motion to waive site plan approval for the backup generators. Second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? Is Mark, are you on? I am. Do I need to recuse myself as I work yeah, for you, Matt? Yeah, they're, they're only if you ride the bus. So yeah, <laughs> why don't you just abstain? Yeah, I will abstain. Okay. Yeah. Okay, motion passes four zero with one abstention. Okay. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, and we had, uh, let's see, Tim Zhang. Tim, Tim, Tim Zhang is next, I think. Yep. Yes. Hey, everyone. I am Tim Zhang from Kinley Horn. I am here representing Target. Um, this Target site is on 367 Russell Street. Hadley, Massachusetts, and Target is proposing to um, expand their current drive up stall configuration. I can share my screen to show the area of interest. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the, the current drive up stalls on site are um, right here. It's a little blurry, but hopefully you guys can make it out. And we're proposing to expand these four spaces to 24 um, drive up stalls instead of four. Hey, and uh, we're seeking administrative approval from planning board for these stalls. Couple questions on this. Sure. 
you're eliminating about a dozen parking places by the appearance of this project. Correct. We're reducing parking and by approximately six spaces. Well, okay, six, six, six spaces. Will you still have enough two for one parking to meet zoning requirements? I don't see those calculations anywhere. We do not have zoning calculations right now, but our, um, in terms of traffic, we're, we should be actually reducing traffic because of the quick turnaround of the drive up stall. That, that's irrelevant. Plant zoning requirements say you should have two parking, two feet of parking area for each square foot of building. The fact is that you're eliminating the equivalent of six parking spaces of so many square feet of parking. What will your what will you have for a count? Will you still have two for one parking after that is done? I do not have that answer right now, but uh, I, I will recalc. Okay, uh, without that calculation, we can't give you anything. And, and another question. Uh, I note that the poles are red, is that correct? Yes, they're red. Which is essentially target's color red, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Will there be any, be any lettering on the poles? Uh, when you say pole, I can actually pull up the detail. Do you mean the beacon or the post? They both will have lettering. Yeah. So essentially, I would think that this is probably additional signage. Do you have any place around here that has this that we could take a look at it? Any place around this? Um, I'm not that I'm aware of. I'm actually not too familiar with um, the town. It's my first. Oh, I mean, in, in the in the valley. I mean, there's a lot of targets in the in the valley. Is there another target within fifty miles radius that has this stuff that we could look at it? I do not know that, but I can definitely reach out to Target and see if they have anyone, any store that already has this implemented. Be, be, because the pictures that we see are very, um, they, they don't give us the whole, what it's gonna look like. They show us one or two little stanchions, but when you look at the whole parking lot, what is it going to look like in the parking lot? To me, this is, this may not be the most attractive thing to be putting in a parking lot. Exactly, exactly. It looks like you're going to be going down the midway of the three county fair. You know, I mean, well, I don't right. well Jim, Jim, you bring up a point that I was about ready to, you know, when Target, when Target uh, purchased the, uh, the the land, the building from Pyramid. Uh, they took away a lot of the green space when they repaved the uh, the parking lot. So uh, I, I don't, it's not germane to this particular issue, but uh, awesome. yeah. we don't like it. So what is that for? Drive up. Huh? Drive up. Drive up. So this this is one thing. Uh, this really could be considered parking if you got yeah. checked. <laughs> Uh, just for example, like uh, two levels. Walmart has designated spaces for people picking up their uh, pharmacy prescriptions. Correct. It would be similar to, I believe, Walmart has a, a similar program where they did. They do have designated spaces for pickup. Yeah, and. This this is a you know a tough call from our point of view. You know, me technically Jim is right on target, but uh, from the changing uh, business models now, uh, there's certainly going to be more stuff ordered online, and then you can pick it up free of shipping costs. That uh, is the target store. So, is are we going to see more of these? I think Target's mentality when they proposed the Strata expansion project, and just, just so you guys know, this is a national effort. 
where um, not just this store, but every single one of their stores are going to eventually go through this drive of expansion project. Well, possible. it's real. It's really a Minnesota effort. Uh, Target's based in Minneapolis. And so this is really Minnesota nice. OK, it's not a national effort. That's my opinion. OK, when I when I say national effort, I mean, they're trying to have their stores nationwide have um, their drive up stalls expanded. But as I was saying, um, these drive up stalls, we, the reason Target would like to expand them is because throughout the past year, we've seen a lot of prop popularity because of COVID. Um, customers would like to go on, go on site, get their order without actually going in the store and have that quick turnaround and be in and out. You know, for many of these people, walking into the store is probably the only exercise they get in a week, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I do don't that. think the gentleman is prepared to respond to that. Much. <laughs> I was, um, well, clearly, uh, I was so, uh, trying to make a joke, but if you didn't get it, you didn't get it. So, <laughs> so hey, the next, a serious a next, question? Well, this is one, one more question, Tim. Uh, oh, yeah, do we have time for serious questions? This is not going to be... Uh, uh, like Kohl's did. Kohl's uh, eliminated, so let's say, their children's wear, and they put a Amazon pickup station there. This is not going to be anything like that, is it? It's going to be strictly Target. Right, strictly Target. They okay. are merchandise only. Okay, because that generated a lot of additional trucks coming into the area. So... And Tim, Tim, how does this work? Is this is this uh, similar to Whole Foods, where you stay in your car and you answer a text or something, and they bring it out to you? I'm not entirely sure how the Whole Foods process works, but um, for Target, the customers will have a Target app on their phone. Um, for example, let's say it's this car. This car would pull up into stall one. Um, they would go onto the app and say, "Hey." So and so, I'm here, and they would it would ping a Target employee to come out with their order, walk to them, give them the order, and then the customer would leave afterward. So, so that raises my question, if I can speak, to Mike, that yeah. that that this is that they're not typical parking spaces where someone parks and they walk in and they spend you know anywhere from ten to. 10 minutes to an hour in there and then walk back out. This is a lot of employee pedestrian traffic going out constantly to this. And I'm wondering if it doesn't make sense to have a center aisle here, they're walking down. Uh, you know, it, there's just a safety concern that this is a little bit different of a typical parking that there's, a, there's gonna be a lot of pedestrian traffic serving, you know, it's your employees. Uh, I'm just concerned about them walking behind cars and you know if I'm going if I'm the employee and I'm bringing package out to stall seven and the and the, the guy in stall five starts backing out um, it's I wonder if they shouldn't be going down the center of those cars you know have or, or or put them over on the island where you've got a safe pedestrian I don't know if anyone understands my point. Yeah, I understand completely. Uh, I, I know what you're saying exactly. Line. This is a um, lot more pedestrian traffic. Um, is, is there any parking available on the side of the building or in back of the building for pickup? Well, one second when I, while I address the, the first comment. So we actually do propose a walkway in between. Oh, oh good. But, oh. but um, it's only if the town allows it. And we, we check through the code first beforehand. And we don't think... Um, Headley allows compact spaces for a walkway to um, go down the center. But if compact spaces is possible, we can definitely have that walkway go right down the middle and decrease the, the stall length to 16 feet instead of 18. We, what do you we mean do by not... compact spaces? So the, the spaces that we're proposing right now are nine by 18. A compact space would be instead nine by 16 which allows for a four foot walkway right down the middle. Okay. We have no code that requires a certain size parking space. Okay. We so have we our parking requirement is based on square foot. 
square footage. Mm -hmm. So you need, I mean, if you design a parking space, let's say that's 10 foot deep and a vehicle can't fit in there, then that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's an issue between your customer and uh, your, the store, if you would. Right. Okay. Are, are the parking spaces that we're talking about here dedicated specifically to Target or may anyone in the mall park there? They're designated for Target. And these drive up spaces would, would be labeled drive up so that um, not just any customer would pull up and park there. So is there some sign now that says Target parking only? Well, Target owns that, that particular part of the parking lot and okay. that building, so. Uh, okay. So. That is also to the uh, east of the main entrance. So there's nothing between, uh, there's nothing east of the main, en there are no other merchants east of the main entrance. Correct. That would be really inconvenient to go to any place else from that location. And going back to Mike's question earlier about the signage, I, I don't know, and maybe Jim or Bill can, can clarify, but I'm thinking that numbering the stalls, that signage isn't really what we're looking at in terms of square feet of signage. You know, that would be more in the line of like handicap space signage, which we don't limit that. You know, that's that's assisting their parking. It's not brand. Uh, sign it, you know, I, I don't know. What's your opinion? No, I, 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 I would agree, Mark. I think it's directional. And uh, I don't think, given how far back that signage is from the road, yeah, the only people who are going to be close enough to see it are people who are in the Target parking lot already. Even if they got the Target name on it and the Target logo? Yeah, they, they don't scale. have the logo. Or sorry, they don't have the name. It's just um, a little okay. car, car icon. There's, but there's a logo right there. Yeah, That's, there's a logo. Uh, right, and it's but it's directional to keep someone from parking there who's not using the drive up function. So I, I I still think it's directional in terms of telling you not to park there if you're not if you haven't ordered, you know, through the app or. Whatever. So it looks like it's not even it's not more than two. I. I 3.5 feet by two feet. Right. Yeah, so uh, what we would not want to see though is we would, uh, it, is that internally illuminated? It is not. Okay, we would not, uh, current bylaw does not allow internal illumination of any signage. So uh, what, are the, what are the solar panels for on all the posts? So these posts are, are actually internally illuminated. So now that you say that, we'd probably remove these from the design just for um, this particular store. The whole post is internally illuminated? These, these beacons, these posts, correct. The okay. solar panel provides energy for it to be internally illuminated. That won't fly. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, so I will make note of that. I mean, if you wanted to use solar panel to do some kind of a, you know, like a gooseneck downlight on it, that's okay, but we don't allow uh, internally illuminated. Okay. And uh, Mike, to your earlier question, the fire chief and the building inspector are having a running battle with a lot of the stores in both malls uh, about attempting to do um, uh, the um, drive up uh, delivery right at the curb because mm -hmm. that's in that's in the fire lane and yeah. uh, they they do not want anyone parking stopping in front of a store. Uh, Old Navy got some static from the fire chief on that and some of the others uh, have as well. So it's not ideal because it does involve having people cross a traffic pattern, but it is a quieter side of the uh, store anyway. So uh, correct. 
Yeah. So I would say that at the top there where you've got the crosswalk, you, you might want to bring that to the center of that island and, and use your four foot. You know, right. A walkway. That other scheme that you had. Right. Right. So, so one, of, one of my concerns was that you were going to start a trend here, but from what I'm hearing is you're the only store that could propose to do this because the, the rest of the stores don't independently own their parking. For stores in general or? Yeah, well, uh, say Whole Foods or Michaels or uh, mm -hmm. the, the bookshop. They don't own the prop, the, the parking spaces in front of them, so they couldn't put these types of structures in to uh, designate pickup. Is that is that our jurisdiction, or is that the mall ownership? I think it's the malls. If, yeah, if, I, if they were to, just as it, does it kind of clarify, if the individual stores were to strike deals with the owners of the malls they could request such things also yeah time will tell so i don't want to micro manage something that is really a business decision my only reservation about the pathway down the middle is i think most people are going to want to have what they pick up loaded into their trunk Right, so, but you've got a you've got an aisle next to each car, so they can come down the front to the and then walk around the side of it. That's and correct. Put it in the trunk, or some people might back in, but probably not. Yeah, no, I I I think the the the, the, the aisle way down the middle and to the point there, they could walk down those little walk paths and reach the back of the car without having to walk behind another car. Right, you know. In this case, you could walk by one, two, three, four, five, as many as eight cars to get to the last one in a row. Yeah. So from a safety point of view, I like the aisle down the middle. As to my other question, is there parking available for Target in the back of the building or not? Or is everything in front? There is, tar there is parking in the back. Um, I'm not positive if it's designated for Target, if I'm being honest. But no. I... I can get a can talk to Target and find out. Yeah, well, you know, you, you, since people, you could get around this whole issue about taking away parking spaces if this were put in the back and the, the groceries were delivered out the back door. Um, we, we don't know that, Mike. If there's parking out back, it's probably been calculated into the parking area. Yeah, I, I understand that. I understand that, but at least we wouldn't have this issue in the front of the store for, as somebody said earlier, aesthetic purposes. Just a, just a possibility. Hmm. I mean, who cares where you pick it up? I'd, I'd rather pick it up in the back of the store rather than dealing with all the traffic in the front of the store. But it's my opinion. Hmm. Could to you look that, at that? Could you look that at that? Point, point? Yeah, to that point, um, a lot of stores... Well, it's in Target's opinion that um, customers won't be able to see the signage if it were in the back or the stalls if they were in the back. So they would more, more likely be lost and wouldn't be able to find the spaces. And you, just you to, don't give Ms. Mahalia enough credit. <laughs> to, to go back to the, the traffic point that was made earlier, um, if I could elaborate a little bit on the, the Target app. Um, the Target app provides each customer with a designated time that they should, estimated time that they should arrive. So, you know, it, there would never, never be a case where Target would send a text out to 30 customers, let's say, and have 24 customers here, but six of them wouldn't have a space. It's very controlled traffic. Right. It's not, it's not like 10 people show up at once. Right. You know, you're, like that. You're, tr you're trying to avoid um, jam ups. Right. Do you have any statistics on how many, what percentage of the target customers in Hadley have pickup? We don't have statistics specifically in Hadley. But so, the, so the, this request is basically based on some national average rather than Hadley specific stuff. Correct. Well, well, I mean, the, the fact is you have 24 parking spaces there. 
So the, the fact that you have 24 says that you need 24 spaces and that you could have most of those spaces filled at one point in time or another. Because if you schedule, the, if your point of scheduling the vehicles is so accurate, you could get, get along with far fewer of those parking spaces. Exactly. Exactly. My, so, exactly my point. I'm going to take a ride down there tomorrow just to do a little reconnaissance. And I'm going to see over a 30 minute period, how many people have pickup because so, they obviously haven't done their due diligence on this. You're requesting 24 spaces, 12 on a side. So at any point in time, we have to assume that you would have 20 to 22 of those spaces filled. Impossible. Okay. But, so if you don't, if you're going to schedule so closely, if you're not going to be filling those spaces, then you need far fewer. Right. Okay. Um, I suspect what you're going to find is that there, there are, there are going to be peak spots, just like with everything else that, uh, probably, uh, Saturday afternoon is going to be very busy. And I would venture to guess that Wednesday morning, there won't be many pickups. Um, yeah. but I think this is sort of getting into micromanaging there. Yes. There, they have the parking spaces there. They're, the spaces aren't going away. They are being used for target customers. Um, and frankly, I think it's far enough back that unless it's creating a, some kind of uh, parking lot turmoil, um, I'm not too worried about it. Um, it's, it's sort of out of sight, out of mind. Well, but the fact is they're eliminating 650 feet, 650 square feet of parking. Correct. With this layout. Yes, they, they have to right. demonstrate that I just they want, have. I, want, I mean, I have, with the overall scope of what they're doing, I have no problem with it. Everything seems to be fine as long as they put the middle, the aisle down the middle for safety, et cetera, et cetera. I just want to be sure they still comply with the two-for-one parking. That's, that's my one concern. And do they have to... Um... Uh, Tim, you, you mentioned that you're, you're losing six spaces. I calculate you're losing eight um, because I look at the, if your drawings to scale, I'd look at the aisles next to it and where you have 12 spaces plus aisles, they have 16 cars. So you're losing four per row. So you're losing eight, eight spaces. Um, do they, uh, how do we put that into their two for one? they're reducing the number of parking in the same amount of space because they're putting more aisles. So is there a calculation to subtract the aisle area from the parking area? Is that? The, the walking aisles, as they had in a previous drawings, are six foot wide by nine foot deep on each side. So there were two, two four, six, eight, they're losing 12 times six times nine, which is 648 square feet of parking area. So I think we just need the answer to how many square feet they had, how many right. square feet they had to start with. That's right. right. We, do, we don't know that. We, don't, we haven't seen that calculation, but it's, if they still meet two for one when this is all said and done, then this is fine. Yeah. Okay with the safety measures that we've said and no internal lighting on the, on the posts. All right, so I will get um, parking calcs with the two for one requirement being met. I'll have a walkway added and I will remove the, the beacon from the drawing and the plans. Is there, I think I touched on everything. Was that it? That was every, the internal illumination is a no. Meet the two for one parking and you should be pretty well to go. All right. I mean, um, if you're planning to do this all hours and so it, there will be pickup after, after sunset, you know, in the winter, you may want to just look at modifying your pylon instead of having an internal lamp, have an external two lamps that shine down on either side so that people can see what 
you know, they can safely see at night what number stall they're pulling into. But I guess um, I guess the other argument is they're pulling in, their headlights will illuminate it. So. Well, the, the parking lots are already pretty well illuminated, Mark. Yeah, I guess so. Just a quick question. What happens around the holiday season when all the parking spaces in the mall are full and people see that these pickup things are empty and people pull in and go in the mall and shop for two hours? Is it going to be some type of monitoring of that? That'll uh, be a business problem that Target will have to deal with by themselves. I just wanted to point something a, out to you. I'm thinking ahead here. Yeah, yeah, because it, yeah. it, that, that's a target up. issue, not a zoning yeah. issue. Right, it'll throw up their scheduled um, arrivals for pickup if there's no yeah. schedule. Yeah, I'm sure that they have people paid to think about that. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a hypothetical I, I can't answer. <laughs> So are, are there 24 stalls in Houston, Texas for each target? And there's 24 in Hadley. Are you, is that what you're saying? Yeah, they're, they're working towards getting 24 at each of their target stores. Each of the super stores or whatever you call it. Yeah. Yep. So it's driven by the size of the store, not the size of the market. Right. Probably. Yes. Each, you're correct. It's each of their super stores, not, um, not one of their smaller stores. Right, because it's it's designed to handle a certain amount of volume. It has a certain number of cash registers. It all works out to a certain volume. Well, I, if you're, if I, used work, I, used work, I used to work for the Postal Service, and we had all different model te templates for towns or cities retail, and it was all calculated uh, down to, you know, minutes and people and dollars per sale and all, you know. Well, if you if you ever been in Houston, Texas, in the middle of August, I guarantee you, twenty four of these slots will be filled. Not so sure about Hadley. <laughs> yeah, again, I, I don't have an answer for that. Well, Tim, we meet the first and third Tuesday of every month, basically on Zoom, like this one is. Mm -hmm. so if we come back in two weeks with these questions answered, you'll be all set. All right, perfect. That's all I had for you guys. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, gentlemen, did just out of interest, I don't recall, did uh, Whole Foods come to us with their uh, drive up parking spaces and signs and all that? I don't remember that. I don't believe uh, most of them have, but most of them aren't doing, uh, if they're throwing up signs in the parking lot, uh, they are. You know, so I'm thinking more like uh, I'm more familiar with Home Depot and Lowe's and how they're doing it. It's really temporary COVID related. And uh, this seems to be more of a change based on a um, business plan. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they, all those stores are putting up something in a lots, Mark. They still have the same number of parking areas. Yeah. Yeah. So that, you know, I mean, the writing on the pavement pick up only or whatever it may be, there's really no difference as far as the parking areas go. Right, they didn't add the aisles in, in between the spaces, which eliminates spaces, right? Right, I mean, one of them put in track the trailer drive-throughs or trailer drive-throughs, while it's still the same amount of parking area, it's still valid. And I see regular cars parked there all the time, including me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, Thanks, okay. Tim. Thanks for all your answers. Of course. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Yep. Good Thank you, Tim. Okay. The Hadley Planning Board will conduct a public Zoom public hearing on Tuesday, April 20, 2021, beginning at 6.45 p.m. The purpose of the hearing is to review the application of Philip Price for a special permit to create an accessory apartment at 113 Middle Street. Plans are available upon request via email to planning at hadleyma.org, uh, published twice, I think is that March 24 and 31. Mr. Philip Mr. Price, you're up. How are you? Um, yeah, we are proposing to build a in-law apartment um, next to our house, which would be about 550 square feet. It's gonna be on the uh, existing footprint of the old garage that was put in there, I guess when the house was built around 55. 
Um, it's going to be slightly differently shaped. Um, it's going to be connected to our house by uh, a sunroom, a foyer kind of thing. Um, there, we did request a 43 foot var uh, ZBA variance that was granted to us because uh, it's a little closer to the sidewalk than, than the town normally allows. Um, we also got a license uh, to allow for our slightly unusual parking situation where we kind of go over part of the town property. Um, Conservation Commission says we're more than 100 feet from the culvert over there. Uh, but yeah, this is for my elderly mom who's gonna be uh, moving down with us sometime in the next year, hopefully. And you want a public sewer, right, Phil? Yeah, public sewer. Okay. I um, believe we've got all the plans filed there. Um, I don't have I don't have them at my fingertips in terms of, of you all looking at them. I think, Bill, you said you were going to. I did send them up. around, but do you want me to bring them up? If you want to share, that'd be great. Okay. Let me... Uh, In honor of tonight's public hearing, I watched a brief encounter last night. Oh, that's a great movie. Yes, I love your songs, Celia. Oh, <laughs> thank you. My God. <laughs> So let's see. There, this actually came in one, two, three, seven pieces. So yeah, I'm not sure what. Let me try a couple of things here. A couple of them are yeah, sort of repeats with very with a couple of different things on. But, uh, okay. Now, are you seeing this? No, we're looking at your. Just okay. at your regular your first Actually, screen, though. I think you need to unshare and reshare and then yeah. pick the window with the PDFs. Your screen. Okay. So let's uh, start with this one. No, it's not the way. Yeah, that's just the site plan there. Um, okay. The survey. So let me do it this way. Um, Now that indicates that it is, you seen that? Yeah, we see, I see it, yeah. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that okay. shows you've already taken care of the, the, uh, the parking for versus the town of Hadley, you're approved yeah. of. Yeah, we are, we have a contract. And your existing building is already uh, existing non-conforming with the front yard setback and you're not yeah. making that any worse. Yeah, exactly. Right. Same, same, uh, same line there. And it looks like your side yard is over 20 feet. It's probably required at what, 15 maybe? I believe it's 15. Uh, I'll tell you, Mark, you've picked up the jargon here pretty good in about a year and a half. It took me about five years to get there. <laughs> I had four, four good teachers. Yeah. Anything more from this? Um, I'll, I'll bring up some of the, the some of the others next. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Was there, anything, was there anything at the back of the site? Uh, Bill, that you were just showing it, you know, that drawing, could you have scrolled up? Uh, no, there's nothing relevant in the back. Everything was in the front. Okay. So this is labeled the, I'm sorry, that did not work right. That's the same one where, where we delineated yep. the new third parking spot. This is the <laughs> parking plan. Right, yeah. Get rid of that one. The parking plan is there showing that they have adequate parking. Um, it's in Middle Street. Uh, let's see. This is 
the floor plan. Yep. Yep. It's going to be and, slightly uh, different on the inside, but it's not the outside. Isn't going to change at all. And so that does not exceed 900 square feet. Is that correct? That's correct. This one is, let's see. Well, it's 510 square feet for that. And I believe the, the sunroom area is about, uh, I think it's around 200, maybe a little less. Looks so like 15 by 10 would be 150. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Look at that out. Uh, and let me see. Give me some we exterior. have an exterior rendering here. Yep. Yeah, some of the windows are going to be a little different, but not much else. And it is. Yeah. Okay. When was that house built in the, in the late 50s? 55. Uh, my wife's grandfather built it. Okay. Yeah. I guess so, Phil, so Phil Reed was your grandfather-in-law, for lack of a better term. Yeah, he was. Okay. He used to be the Gazette reporter when we were kids, Mike, for Hadley. Yep. He was the ed I thought he was the editor of the Gazette. I don't think he was the editor. No. He, ah. was the, he was the Hadley. I know he was the Hadley reporter, reporter for years. Oh, I told you his wife was my fifth grade teacher, and uh, I was the teacher's pet, I'll tell you. Oh, is that right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to tell Flora. That's great. And now here is one more. Yep. Uh, yeah. No. Showing the elevation there. Um, no concerns height wise. The area is okay. The setbacks are good. It's um, matches the existing context. Yep. It's the I idea. I don't think we have any, I don't see any issues. Oh, I think it's a really nice looking building. I really do. I think it'll be nice when it's done. Yeah. Look at all the gardening stuff around it, too. It's going to be nice. Uh, it's, we're, uh, uh, Toshi Kashima, contractor, is going to build it. Um, he just built a, we put a little a deck behind our house here, too, this past year. Mm. He did a great job. Okay. All right. That's pretty much it, I think. Yeah. Any questions? Butters have been notified. No one's here to create an uproar. I don't see anybody. <laughs> they have been notified. They were all sent the, the, the uh, notice. Everyone I've talked to is aware. So I'll go through the checklist if there are no other questions. It's a complete separate housekeeping unit. Only one. Mm -hmm. Site plan shows all interior and exterior changes. Mm -hmm. Complies with the bylaw uh, as to required elements. Um, the uh, elevation plans, there'll be uh, control of erosion, dust, and silt during and after construction. Not greater than 900. Minimum parking provided comply to all standards of the Board of Health and the building inspector. So I will make a motion to grant the application for a special permit uh, for an accessory apartment. Uh, project is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw. The project is not detrimental to the established future character. Work will be conducted in accordance with the submitted plans, which I will attached to the decision so we are clear what we are approving in in memory of my fifth grade teacher mrs reed i would like to second that motion <laughs> okay well hang Thank on you. a second i got a bit to go oh, okay. no, you're not done yet Mike. <laughs> but i will i will mark you as a second um approval Thank you. for this specific intended use of uh the premises for an accessory apartment 
The special permit is automatically revoked if the owner no longer lives on the premises. Um, the accessory apartment shall never be enlarged beyond the 900 square feet allowed by the bylaw, uh, occupied by no more than two adults plus related children. Um, special, uh, the owner must occupy one of the dwelling units and must provide a notarized letter that they whip, that they that is what they are doing, um, and you'll provide the, that will get recorded at the registry of deeds. You'll also provide a notarized letter to the building inspector. Um, if the property is sold, the new owners, in order to exercise the permit, must uh, themselves agree that they will occupy one of the dwelling units, and this approval does not excuse the project from compliance with any other provisions of the Hadley zoning bylaw not specifically addressed herein um, and is subject to approval of other boards if and as required. That's the motion. Mr. Sarzinski has seconded it. Any other discussions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Great. Good luck. So much. Okay. Uh, Phil, did, did I hear uh, Mark say that you're a composer? I'm a musician, yeah. I do write music, yeah. You know Mason Daring? Uh, don't, don't Marblehead? Know no. Oh, what, from Marblehead? He's from Marblehead, but he grew, He went to college around here. He he does scores for movies and he did Lonesome Dove and uh, he's friends oh. with Redford. He did some Redford stuff. I just thought you might be know who he is his real name's kevin but his stage name is mason oh now i think now his name looks i'm sure i've seen him on some credits okay i was curious <laughs> okay so, Jim, will you drop that file off at the planning board box at town hall sometime that is in an envelope in the planning board box bill okay with, Great. Um, with, the, with the mailing with the remaining mailing labels one quick question i think i owe you a fee right for the for the application Oh, you never paid the fee for that? No, I didn't. I didn't get a. I don't know. I didn't know how much it was. Well, three hundred fifty dollars. Three fifty. I'll get that over tomorrow. Is that okay? okay. Yeah, that goes to the town clerk. Town clerk. Make it out. Make it out to Be town clerk. Payable to the town, town of Hadley. Hadley. Town of Hadley. Okay. Yeah. Right. Town of Hadley. And now, and now we're in like a what is it? A, tw a twenty-one day. Uh, uh, well, it's twenty-one days from when I get the decision filed with the town okay. clerk which may be probably sometime next week. Okay, 21 days from there. Well, the, yep. on, the, on the 21st day, Phil, if nobody appeals, you can get the permit. The actual appeal is 20 days. On the okay. 21st day, you can apply for the building permit. Okay. Right. And what, what, what does that process consist of the apply for the building permit? Um, would, Tosh, would our contractor go over Your it? Your right? contractor should take care of that. Okay. Yeah. I'll throw it to him. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, okay. everybody. Good, good luck. luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks a lot. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. I we have the invoice for well, we can talk about the zoning articles too. Um Bill, did you get those to the or do you want me to email them to the uh, uh I, I will I'll take care of getting it there. Um I talked to Carolyn uh this afternoon. Okay. And she uh, her her target is to get the warrant to town council by Friday. Okay. So right. what I did uh, just before the meeting started was I sent around to everyone uh, the final drafts of the bylaws. Jim and I, 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 I worked on them. Uh, Jim um, took a look at them. I think we both agree that this seems to be the final version of all the drafts that were floating around. But um, I did send all of you and Ken Comia a, um, a copy of the final three bylaws. If you just take a look at it and if you see anything in there that uh, doesn't seem right, uh, just just let me know and I'll uh, get it corrected. And then, I'll, then I will send everything in to, uh, uh, I'll send everything in to uh, Carolyn. Okay. Just for everybody's information, the original request to publish in the Gazette was the 19th and the 26th. However, the Gazette goofed and they were gonna publish, they published them on the 16th 
and they were going to do it again on May 3rd. Luckily, it was caught in time, and the second publication is going to be this Friday, and so we're still all set with the proper note, proper publications in the Gazette. It was just done a few days ahead of time, so we're, we're still good. I assume Don't they could use some help organizing their legal ads. Town meeting date, Jim? The town meeting date, I think, is May 6th. May 22nd, rain date, May 23rd, outside at Hopkins. May 26th? That May 22nd, Saturday. Oh, May 22nd, okay. Rain date, Sunday the 23rd. Jim, what was the date of the first publication? 4, 416? 416, and the second one will be 423. Friday and Friday. Is it going to be outside of Hopkins, Jane, or is it going to be at this, the uh, fire station? It will be outside Hopkins where last spring was. Okay, thank you. That works well because they have the uh, power in for the sound speakers and it's a bigger space. Hopefully it won't be quite so warm as last year's spring meeting. Okay. Yeah, that worked. The outside one was nice. Yeah, a lot of people worked hard to make that happen and especially public safety and they deserve lots of thanks. Okay. So the also in the same legal ad was the notice of the How would I say it? The the re, re, re the requirement of the public notice for the public hearing <coughs> on heirloom collection. They were both in the same legal ad, and um, I sent out that re notice to the all the departments in town that might have a concern: fire, um, police, clerk, board of health, the rest. And they've all anybody that's replied, which is actually most of the ones of, of concern. We've all replied the heirloom collection. They've had no issues with them. So with that said, I'll make a motion to pay the Gazette for the legal ad for the zoning articles and for the heirloom collection of notice. The total is $708.76. I'll second. I'm going to have, Nick, when we have the, when the, I'm assuming that Al's going to be at the public hearing bill for the next one because I sent it to him as well. Yeah. I'll ask him to simply pay $300 of that fee, which is less than it would have cost for the, for the filing. And it saved him some money and it saved us some money by putting them all together. Okay. okay. We have a motion in a second to pay the Gazette 708.76. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. What else do we have? I, I see. I see Jane's here. Jane, uh, does, does she have anything observation she wants to make, or she's just visiting us? I was just here to tell you the dates of town meeting and anything else that might come up that I could help with. Well, we're we're good right now. We got yeah, the three. Sounds, sounds great, and thanks for keeping the town in line. <laughs> that's that's all oh. it's full. we did get a this is for your for, for jane's information as well she can pass the second i'm sure we'll either bill or i or both will be at tomorrow night's next meeting but there was a no meeting tomorrow night coming. it's no finance meetings. finance committee meeting on our budget tomorrow night okay well there is the we got a letter from citizens of rocky hill road um raising a point about the old Gnotic farm stand being basically reinvigorated as a farm stand. And I guess they're calling it a breakfast bar. And they were saying how they thought that it's zoned ag residential. It's an illegal use. This can't happen and so on and so forth. However, um, Bill could explain this in much more succinct letters that I can, but the state law has changed regarding a farm stand with associated uh, food selling in ag residential districts. That is why Barstow's farm stand exists. That is why Cook farm stand exists. 
And that is partially why um, Hadley Sugar Shack exists because there is an exemption if it is a farm stand serving a certain percentage of local produce, they are allowed to have basically a small restaurant associated with it. So the select board has also seen that letter and the select board's position is any complaints that are received without signatures on them are ignored. Okay. Okay. But just so everybody's in, just for the for oh, Jane's information, that's and then I think Tommy already knew that. Yep. Um, that's where it's coming from. That their letter is about, I want to say, much, mostly wrong. It, it was incorrect. It was correct probably 30, 25 years ago, but the law has changed greatly since then. So one of the advantages of having people sign complaints, questions, concerns is that someone could respond to them and give them that information. Yeah. But the, the planning board has taken the same stand. If we get anonymous letters without signatures, we basically ignore them as well. Yes. Because I said this many years ago, it's tough to chase a ghost. And, and you can have ghosts making accusations that are totally erroneous and spend a lot of time going around the bush for no reason. Yeah. Okay, so I'm glad the town's got basically agreement on ignoring anonymous things. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's it. Okay. Thanks, Jane. Yeah. Anything else, Mr. Dwyer? I have nothing else. Anybody else have anything? I would just say I hope that the uh, country heals after the verdict that came in and that we don't see an outbreak of we would Come certainly back. hope that that is a step in the right direction. Exactly. Exactly. Any, if not, anything else? Mr. Tom, you got anything, Tom? Okay. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you. And thank you, John. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Jane. <laughs>